Hello everyone and welcome back to this humble abode of gameplay and memes. Today we once again return to ARK THE SURVIVAL OF THE FITTEST with another replay commentary. So this time around I think uh, the title pretty much spoils what happens but you know since you're watching this video, you clicked on it, I guess it worked. At least, uh, at least you know what you're in for. <laughs> so, without further ado, let's get into it. My first victory in this uh, new, updated version of Ark the Survival of the Fittest. So unfortunately, in this particular instance, or maybe fortunately, I don't know, I started the recording a little bit uh, after the starting the actual game. As you can see right now, there's four minutes left until the ring starts moving. It's still the first circle, you know, for now the entire map is available. But uh, yes, it is a little bit uh, later than, you know, just dropping in. But basically, yes, uh, of course, uh, every victory, or almost every victory, I suppose, as now, after the Karka nerf, which uh, this game was re being recorded after the Karka nerf, every game, every victory, of course, every success story, starts with a Thylakaleo, <laughs> as you can see right here. So yes, for now I'm just running around farming points, I think I just tamed it very recently, because like, as you can see it's barely even halfway towards level 1. So I'll just be killing some stuff here, cleaning up, uh, trying to uh, level up, while also, hopefully, not running out of stamina at the worst possible time. Yeah, I tried to level up to one, I actually didn't have enough points. Whoopsie daisy. But I think if I kill this trike right here, I should probably level up to one. So, uh, at least there is that. I then set my sights on the Spino that was walking around nearby. I decided that, uh, yes, I think Spino is uh, a really good team. I really enjoy them because, you know, they can be really fast, surprisingly fast with the hydration buff. They can be they hit relatively hard and they have an extremely good attack uh, hitbox. You know, it's very large, especially if they get on uh, on two feet, if they stand on two legs. So I decide to, yes, team a Spino here and try to level it up as much as I can. The Spino, unfortunately for me, uh, starts fleeing <laughs> because my arrow, in conjunction with the other wildlife, did a little bit too much damage to it, so it's fleeing now. But, of course, on the like Leo, I can catch up to it, no problem. I'll just uh, kill some more creatures on the way, like this Dimorphodon right here. And yes, the Spino will eventually turn around and try to fight me, but it's a little bit too late. I have, I, I'm not entirely sure why I got off the file here to tame the Spino. But yes, I see some Microraptors flying nearby, but of course, you know, with the power of the Spino, I don't have to worry about Microraptors anymore, unless other players uh, are involved nearby. I am still riding the Thyla, even after taming the Spino, though, because, you know, Thyla is a lot more maneuverable. It allows you to, you know, go around terrain a lot more easily. Of course, you know, the Spino will be following me, but even if it gets left behind right now, it's not too big of a deal because I will have to come back to it eventually because, you know, the uh, the playable area is behind me right now. It's uh, down the hill towards the north, so for now I'll just keep leveling up my Thylet till level 3 because I've, I have found out, and you know, other players can tell you as well that uh, leveling up your uh, one smaller faster creature to three is still a good strategy even if you have some other larger creatures because uh, this way you know you can run around really fast you can gather points really fast and you can share experience to the rest of your crew to the rest of your circus or your zoo I guess you can say while simultaneously uh, you know while simultaneously gathering points or tokens very quickly in order to finish leveling them up so that's exactly what I'll be doing here. Run into a pack of Allosaurs, which is a little bit scary, because, you know, if the three of them together attacked, they would have quite heavily damaged my Spino, but it looks like, like they are attacking one by one, so it's not too big of a deal. Of course, the Spino <laughs> is showering everything, <laughs> the entire area, the entire mountain, with blood <laughs> because of the special Allo bite, but I think he's gonna be okay. I, I think. And also getting some extra spear change in the form of Dimorphodons as well. Dimorph Dimorphodons are actually surprisingly good for tokens considering how weak they are. They give you, yeah, they give you 7 per kill. 
So it's definitely worth killing them when you can. Especially considering, you know, a level two, level three Thyla will kill them when one hits. Eventually I have to come back to the river, of course, because you know, this is the, where the playable area is. I decide to cross the river and go for the other spider that you see on the right side there. He is just emerging out of the water, of course, destroying everything along the way. And now it is time to tame the second Spino. I actually somehow managed to hit it. So it's going to be very easy pickings from here. Yeah, I wouldn't want to fight it inside the river because God knows how many piranhas and other nasty creatures will be there. So I decide to lure it towards the shore by shooting it and then taming it. And very nice, we now got two Spinos, a level 3 Thyla. And we are already within the playable area, so at least for now we don't have to worry about anything horrible happening to us. Unless, of course, we suddenly get attacked by multiple other players at the same time. Speaking of players, this game, as you can see, has a relatively low player count. I think it was 29 of them in total, which means there will be a little bit less competition than you'd normally expect. So I suppose that's a plus as well. Die, Microraptor! I tamed a monkey. For now, I decide to stick around and not advance any further into the circle, as I remember uh, high-level supply crates often spawn along this riverbank, along those riverbanks. So I'm hoping to get some purples and reds here, and uh, gain some additional weapons this way because as far as i can tell i still don't have a compound bow an amazing shot on that on that paris there i hit it in the neck <laughs> so now it's forced to cross the river and attack us as well very nice shot indeed very proud of that one <laughs> i level up both of my spinos here uh the first one i level up to two and the second one i level up to one so they can survive a little bit more hits in case we have to fight because I do see somebody is else, someone else is approaching. But I think here this player just flees. Very wisely that is. Because a level 3 Thylia is already enough to beat him, but I've also got two Spinos who have also been leveled up. I tried to get another Spino here, or at the very least kill it, but I don't think I was too successful because yeah, I couldn't hit it and eventually just gave up and moved on. So like I said, I am sticking around here, perhaps to my own peril, as you know, I am very close to the edge of the circle. However, for now I feel like I can still grab these loot boxes and then, or these uh, supply crates, and still move on at a reasonable pace, so as to not get left behind, left behind. Although as you can see right there, the circle, the playable area will be relatively far away, so I'll have to all ass a quite quite far indeed. <laughs> Finally found a compound bow and of course immediately crafted as many arrows for it as possible. Of course eventually I have to move on. As the ring starts moving I should get moving as well. Still of course trying to get as many points as I can whilst traveling. Because you know, we will of course still need those to level up so I might as well gather them along the way as long as I can do it relatively safely. Here I spot somebody on a small fast mount, and indeed it is a moose. So I need to be relatively careful. My spinos are on passive, but you know, this passing moose could do some serious damage to them, be it with a rocket or its own antlers, or even a compound bow shot. It looks like it's trying something here, but probably won't be too successful if, it, if they approach it like that. Uh, however, suddenly the ring catches up, so I of course whistle passive and try to get moving, put as much distance once again between myself and the wall as possible. Now one of my Spinos does something really weird and decides to just uh, run around in circles instead of moving properly. But at the very least I'm healing one of them, so hopefully they can at least survive long enough to advance to the next circle. The moose is of course near nearby. At this point I just I don't feel like it's trying to attack though, I just think it's doing the exact same thing as I am, which is trying to bypass the mountain without actually climbing it. Because that will end you much faster than <laughs> any sort of uh, confrontation you could probably have in this particular match. Looks like both of my spinos are making it safely so far, and despite all the rocks and all the other obstacles here, yeah, it looks like they're moving just fine. 
Still have to be relatively careful, of course, and I still need to keep putting more and more distance between myself and the wall. The other spider knife decides to do something weird, but I think it's, it didn't, yeah, it didn't get clapped by the barrier there, so at least that's important. And here I spot a small group of dinosaurs. You see a level 2 Carno and a level 1 uh, level one Raptor, which is extremely easy to kill. So of course I do exactly that. And I tried to kill the player as well. Uh, yeah, I tried to whistle on it here, but couldn't quite land it the first time. I see him deploying a rocket launcher, so of course I move away before the launcher can hit me. I heal one Spino here. Unfortunately, I failed to heal the other Spino. I was trying to do that here. But then, the, but then the barrier ends up catching up to us again, so I'm like, nope, nope. I didn't even grab the loot that the player left behind. Although at this point I don't really need it, because, you know, I have the rocket launcher and the compound bow. It's basically all you could wish for, so... And of course the level 2 Spino, who I failed to heal all this time, does unfortunately get knocked out here. So I have to leave it behind. That's too bad, because, you know, we were so close to the... Uh, so close to the next playable area anyway But unfortunately it can't be helped. Yeah, they level up the other spider to rank 2 here tier 2 whatever you prefer in order to Ensure that it, that it doesn't die immediately as well And now I'll be farming some more points near the edge of the playable area because you know this way I, I hope I will run into fewer people It's genuine. It's a genuinely a very good rule of thumb a little tip from me for whatever it's worth if as long as you can stay near the edge of the playable area as it keeps shrinking you will meet fewer people which gives you a little bit more time to farm which I desperately need right now because all I've got is a level 3 Thyla and a level 2 Spina which is of course better than nothing but it's uh, not nearly enough to secure a victory so I have to keep farming I see somebody on a Giganotosaurus over there. Naturally, I'm not at all interested to be anywhere near that, that person. So instead I go in the opposite direction. Uh, this is almost directly uh, in the opposite direction I of where I should be going. Because you, as you can see, the next playable area will be towards uh, the uh, northwest. But you know, as long as I can put some distance between me and the Giga, we should probably be okay. Also, somebody is getting eliminated over there, so not entirely sure what that's all about, but uh, in the meantime, I'll just keep farming, hoping to level up my Spino to uh, tier 3, and moving relatively slowly. I don't anticipate too many, you know, natural obstacles in my way, like any sort of uh, big cliffs or mountains, because I think we will just... Uh, Avoid the white sky peak. We will just uh, you know circle it from the north For some reason my spino is doing nothing here He's just kind of chilling in the back But that's okay, you know I lose half of the health on my thyla. That's what wolves do to you But at the very least, you know Feeling pretty okay right now At this point, I think Yeah, I tried to level the spino up, but then I'm like hmm I shouldn't probably spend probably shouldn't spend all of my points and then I climb the spino see that it's a little bit uh, quite a ways off of level 3 yet, so just gotta keep moving and farming. The ring starts moving here, so I have to move closer towards the next playable area as well. However, what I didn't realize was at, that at some point I actually whistled move to my Spino. So now that it's been given a move command, that overrides the follow commands, so it's just gonna stand there until given another follow command, which I, I hope, thankfully realize here, and I whistle, whistle it to follow, so it starts following me, but it was really scary for a moment, so I see, you know, some, some creatures there, it's a bit of a zoo as well, I decide to not attack them here, rather avoid them because, you know, I'm... Already traumatized from losing my level 2 Spino to the barrier just now. <laughs> so I decide to just cross the river instead in peace. You know, be a little bit honorable. I don't even attack the other team as they are crossing, which they are extremely vulnerable. As you can see, they're basically stuck in the river, but I let them emerge from it without, you know, paying too much attention to them. And here I finally tame myself a Deodon. Yes. I figure out a pig is a very good addition since we are already in the snow biome. I feel like uh, a Deodon would be an excellent addition to the team because it will just keep healing. 
and extremely neat to say the least. I see a little three ri rhino running around like mad, which is I immediately gives me pause because I know very well this rhino, as long as it moves ar uh, moves around quickly enough, it could like kill me, kill my Thyla in three hits. I'm pretty sure, if even that, maybe even two. I'm not entirely sure about the exact numbers, but yes, it's basically it's extremely dangerous. So at this point, since the playable area is so small, I have to constantly look around and pay attention to my surroundings, see exactly who is doing what. I see a player on a moose here, so I try to chase him off. Yeah, I'm not... Uh, you will see throughout this little segment that I keep trying to, like, attack this moose, but uh, in reality I'm not exactly trying to kill him or chase him down or anything like that. All I'm doing is just showing him that I mean serious business and you shouldn't mess with me, you know? I'm just like, if you if you stand still next to me or if you get too close to me, I will kill you. So don't do that, go somewhere else. That's basically what I'm trying to do because, you know, chasing down a moose like this with a team like mine, or with a zoo like mine, I suppose I should say, can be extremely taxing. And you can see he's already shooting me with a compound bow. So, of course, I start chasing here once again. Trying to do some serious damage. Meanwhile, my Deodon levels up to tier 1, which is really nice. I whistle a uh, passive here to put some distance between me and the moose. At this point, I decide to heal the Deodon. Now, this uh, maneuver here, I feel like it might have actually been a mistake. And the reason that is, is because, of course, Deodon constantly heals itself. So, you know, whilst uh, you are spending points trying to heal it, that actually costs quite a lot of tokens, because Deodons do have a very high amount of health. It's like, I think it's right, like, 1800 right now. It's like twice the amount of a level 2 Spino, almost. So, yeah. From my understanding, at least, uh, the amount of tokens you spend to heal depends on the health of your creatures. Which means that, you know, uh, higher health creatures cost more tokens to heal. And in this instance, it's probably... It's probably best to uh, just let the Deodon heal itself over time. Because, you know, it wasn't in any danger uh, in that instance, so... If it just healed itself, uh, I basically would have been the same thing, but I would have had a lot more uh, tokens to my name. Which I could, among other things, use to level up the Deodon even further. Because right now, you know, it's tier 1. I don't want to spend all of my tokens to level it up. Here I try to disable passive healing, which is which doesn't do anything. I'm st I'm still not entirely sure about the controls on the Deodon healing, like how to stop it, because you know when the, your Deodon is healing, it's actually moving around slower, so it can get left behind very easily without you noticing. This is very important that you try to prevent it from healing when you don't need it. But I st I'm still not sure how exactly to do that because you you can see it just keeps healing. Even though the entire party is already full health. So at this point I kind of realize that, you know, the Giganotosaurus that I've seen before is gone. You know, it's just, it's just, a, it's nowhere to be seen. So I figure out that I am probably like the biggest fish in this pond right now. Because all I've seen so far was like a UT with a team of Carnos. I've seen a Moose and a Rhino and that's basically it. And there's only five people, tribes left in the game, so... The last player, besides all these four, is probably just on foot. Which means I should be relatively okay here, as long as I don't run in head first into literally everybody else at once. And die. <laughs> so the ring does stop, a new dinosaur crate starts dropping. I can see that there is another moose. Or it could be the same moose that I've seen before, but uh, the guy, the orange guy, stole it from the blue guy. Because, yeah, this moose is now wearing an orange badge instead of a blue one. So, perhaps, uh, some fight took place that I didn't notice, of course, because I was busy running around trying to grab stuff. And, yeah, one thing I didn't mention is that, essentially, you saw me grab a red drop there. Uh, a few minutes ago, I essentially bullied all of the other players off of it because they couldn't really approach it without fighting me, so that is another thing you can do if you know you are stronger than anybody else in the area, or at least your 
Zoo is stronger, and you can just bully players off of loot drops like this. Of course, they can st uh, still steal it from you, you know, by approaching at just the right moment, grabbing it and running off. But I did manage to prevent it, prevent it there, so more stuff for me. I'm not entirely sure how much valuable uh, stuff I found there, considering, you know, I already had a compound bow and a rocket launcher. But perhaps it was something like more grenades. You can go back and see the video to tell me. Yes, the dino crate is dropping, so... I figure that players might want to try and contest this. And go grab the dino crate for themselves. Or the dino from the crate, I should say. But so far, nobody, at least nobody on a mount, seems too keen to approach. So, what I'm doing here is just running around and destroying some rocks to improve the maneuverability of my squad while also trying my utmost to pay attention to other players and what they are doing I can see that the Rhino is now running very close to the team of the UT and Cardinals and it looks like, considering the movement of their badges, it looks like they are fighting so I decide to join into this fight as well and yes, you can see very well that they are now fighting so I whistle attack on the Rhino and immediately run in by myself, or, or with my own Thyla as well. I'll immediately get hit, <laughs> knocked back, but yeah. I don't think any of these dinos are a match for my level 3 Spino. So I just keep munching. And here you can see the Spino finishes off the day I've done. Now the other two, my other two creatures engage the UT and knock that out as well. While I am here just munching on the Deodon trying to finish that off. Spino takes a rocket to the face, but it still survives. It's still got a decent amount of HP. I try to catch up with the Spino and heal it, but at the same time I see a player, so I just run into this player and try to start munching on him as well, and there you go. The player goes down. Now, I actually have no way of knowing if this was the player with the UT or the Rhino, because it seems like there are still four teams left, so one of the players who was fighting there, one of the two players actually managed to escape. And I think I, here I don't actually have to heal the Spino, because of the... Piggy is still there. The Piggy is following the Spino. For some reason, it's not healing right now, though. But maybe it's gonna start healing soon. Yeah. Healing works in mysterious ways. Here, I finally decide to tame the Dino from the Dino Crate for myself. I see that it's a Rock Golem, and it goes down from just one rocket, which I did not expect at all. <laughs> not gonna lie. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa we gotta run. <laughs> yep. This is the, my first time uh, taming a rock golem, so I had no rock elemental, so I had no idea they go down from one rocket. So of course I immediately level that up with that knowledge in mind, and uh, yes, and heal it as well, so that it doesn't die just like it just uh, went just doesn't go down as easily as it just did. So now yes, the last standing mount uh, for for my enemies is essentially just a moose. Yes, here I decide to do some more rock cleaning, of course. Load another rocket into my rocket launcher, and then I see that I'm out of gunpowder, so I cannot craft any more rockets. So all that's left for me just is just to run around and, s and look for easy pickoffs. Which at this point, like I said, there's only four people left. Suddenly my golem starts running towards somebody else and I realize that I didn't whistle passive after taming it, so it was still a neutral. Or attack your target or whatever else you get. So yes, I of course immediately rectify this problem. Thankfully, they didn't uh, shoot like six rockets at my rock elemental to knock it down immediately. But yes, now I'm just trying to constantly keep moving, so I'm uh, harder to hit. So my team is harder to hit with rockets and grenades. Because the grenades will start flying soon. I realize that since, you know, the circle is shrinking, then the best time to use grenades is when the circle is as small as it possibly can be. Which will come very shortly, and you can already see some acid grenades or gas grenades or whatever flying in. And already damaging my spino, and more poison grenades fly directly past my face, so I of course start moving. I whistle attack on the player on foot, and then uh, start attacking the moose myself. The moose goes down to the ring of death. I whistle passive because I see the player is outside the ring and I don't want all my dinos to follow him. So now I'm just trying to control the perimeter without taking too much damage from the... from the chemical grenade. Here I heal my spino because, you know, it's kind of important. And yes, I see now the two players, so I whistle neutral 
in preparation for the people shooting me or damaging my dinos and getting attacked in return. Yep, here I take a serious, or my Thylo takes a serious shot from a shotgun by somebody, so he immediately gets destroyed. And here the last remaining player is running away from my entire team, I heal the day out on it in the last moment, and the player dies and I win the game! <laughs> hey, there you go. My first victory in the new and improved Dark the Survival of the Fittest. Ah, that felt good. That felt incredible, I tell you. Finally, after two months of playing this game, my first ever victory. And, uh, yes. This is it. This is the victory that I so desperately desired for so long. I hope you enjoyed this video, because I enjoyed recording and narrating over it immensely. As you can see, he has first place, 4 uh, pl player kills, in total 5 dino kills. And I'll start scrolling through the uh, through all the player names, because I want to see, to remember, how many players were there in the game in total. But yes, so, a very good, you know, recipe for victory, potential recipe for victory. Uh, a Thyla, a couple of Spinos, and a Deodon. Now, I do feel kind of lucky that I didn't have to face that Giganotosaurus, because, you know, if I did, the situation would have been... Uh, would have not... Would, wouldn't have been that good, probably, because all I had at that time was a level 2 Spino. And a level 3 Thyla. So, if I were to face that Giga, uh, when I saw it, I could have very easily lost right there. At least that's what I feel like, but that did not happen, and the Giga got dealt with, with by someone else, so I guess I get lucky in that instance, or in that sense. And there we go. Thank you so much for watching, I greatly appreciate it, and I hope to see you soon. For now though, this is all I've got for you for today, so if you enjoyed the video, uh, like it, uh, subscribe to the channel if you still haven't, and leave a comment down below maybe. But uh, yes, that's all I've got for you for today, so goodbye, take care everybody, hope to see you soon.